prints at the higher secondary stage. Then um, there is also you will also find change in the focus uh, uh, of the topic uh, and the skill uh, you um, at the higher secondary stage learners are expected to be more intense with the teaching learning of the topics and the teachers too uh, they are more qualified in the sense the PGT economics handle higher secondary stage. Okay. okay. Uh, when Dr. Jaya when we come to this topic the, this imaginary village Palampur yeah. this is our topic. So, mm -hmm. what is the purpose of teaching this topic at this particular secondary stage? Uh, as you rightly said, we will be talking about the four sources uh, of production that is land, labor, capital. Capital again has been divided into physical capital and human capital. Then um, these four resources helps in the economic growth of the country. And um, uh, this, uh, you can see the economic growth through the process of consumption, production, and distribution. Right? Uh, uh, and the um, there is introduction about the four factors of of uh, production through the story of a village, so that learners can establish linkage um, um, uh, between the country's economy and the local setup. And here it uh, also facilitates the study of indigenous economic system like uh, a rural child will uh, feel that uh, this story of village Palampur is somewhere close to my village. So, he will take interest in it, he will, uh, uh, sh um, he, will uh, be uh, he will take initiative, he might be more creative when he is dealing with the topic. And then uh, there are certain more skills which we learn when we uh, introduce the topic in the child's local uh, uh, situation. So, uh, it in, uh, we tend to introduce certain skills like presentation, communication, um, interpretation of data in economics and uh, uh, other skills like critical thinking skills, problem solving, uh, solving skills and so on. Okay. Dr. Jaya, here I would like to take one of the questions which has been sent by Ms. Anushka yeah. and she is asking why this topic deals with an imaginary village. India is full of several villages. Why imaginary village Palampur and if the, this particular village has all the facility then why is it tagged as a village? Why is it? Tagged as a village. This village has all the facility that means could be tagged as an urban area. But now it is tagged as a village, but it still had, it has all the facilities. Uh, Anushka, uh, that is Anushka's qu question. Yes. I will show you examples of other interesting village and you will, uh, when I uh, come across those villages, you will, uh, you will on your own say these villages are far, far better than our urban areas. Let me uh, uh, show it to you. Um, uh, just hold on. Uh, um, uh, this is a village in northeast. It's the name of the village is Maulianyong and is located in Meghalaya. And this village has been declared as cleanest village of the Asia. Uh, you'll be surprised to know there is no dust, dirt, anything of that sort in this village. The, uh, each household has their own functional toilet, and uh, that's built by the household members only. And uh, um, outside the house, you will find they have kept a bamboo dustbin. That means they are not supposed to throw any garbage anywhere else. They are supposed to dump their garbage mm. in the dustbin. And that that is uh, that they have learned within the culture of that uh, uh, culture of that village. Uh, even in, uh, in in today's uh, uh, urban area, you will not find this culture has been acquired by the urban people. They tend to throw things here and there uh, very frequently. Then uh, another interesting thing is at the end of the week or at the end of the day, they tend to dump their garbage in a pit and that is converted into manure and used in the farm. There is another village, uh, I will um, like to mention about it since um, 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 uh, as an urban child you are interested to know about the village. I must tell you there is another village uh, that is uh, Piplantri in Rajasthan. Here, um, right. uh, the effort has been made by the villagers and the effort made by the villagers tends to improve the gender 
parity index that is GPI. Uh, uh, whenever in this village, whenever a girl is born, the whole village get together and tends to plant hundred uh, uh, tends to plant hundred eleven uh, plants in that area. So that area has already become very green, and then they all get together, collect money, and um, and deposit it in the name of the girl so that she can pursue higher education and uh, they also make sure uh, uh, for her survival and provide her all possible protection. So uh, our first village was the cleanest village in the Asia in Meghalaya. And the second village is promoting uh, GPI, uh, uh, gender uh, 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 G, uh, GPI or promoting the uh, 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 protecting the girl child and there is also a third village. Th this village is located in Mendha Lekha in Maharashtra. This is Mendha Lekha village and here uh, I uh, before I introduce you about this village, I like to tell you forest is in the uh, state list, but here villages have got together. Uh, the villages are mostly from the Gon tribe and they got together they fought a legal case and took over the com, uh, rights of the forest on their own. So there is a community forest uh, in, in, in uh, Maharashtra and, and uh, the community uh, since the community is working on this forest, the, uh, the uh, particular village has become rich in uh, flora and fauna and there is uh, plenty of uh, bamboo grown in that area that uh, um, village is uh, um, uh, uh, recognized as bamboo economy. Bamboo as you know is used for making papers, um, uh, furnitures. So <coughs> when uh, these things uh, are sold in the market they earn profit and the profit earned uh, by selling the bamboo in the market is used for social welfare, it is not used by an individual. Uh, so you can see the village also is not uh, uh, that uh, inferior or we should not look down hmm. at, uh, or, or on a village. The purpose actually for taking up this topic was to sensitize the urban child towards the rural economy. Rural economy is very interesting and we uh, um, really need to know about it, work for it unless and until we work for the rural economy, our country will not develop. As we proceed more and more, you will know who will be the important person for improving the condition of rural economy. Let us wait and see. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, Dr. Jaya, uh, we are talking about villages. You also shown us a lot of villages. Yeah. But when we talk about villages, we get this kind of imagination hmm. that the bullock carts are there, agriculture hmm. are there, we are doing a lot of practices there. Mm -hmm. But particularly, what is the role of agriculture in the village economy? Ah, role of agriculture in the village economy. Agriculture has very important role to play. Uh, I will uh, divide it as it is um, uh, a product, uh, there is a product contribution, there is factor contribution, there is a uh, contribution in the market and there is also a foreign exchange. That is, uh, we all know agriculture provides food to you and me, everyone and it provides fodder to the animals. Then the agriculture f uh, products are also sold in the market uh, and uh, in exchange you get the money or you get the, uh, the purchasing power to buy another things. Then uh, agriculture also provides raw material to the industries and uh, I think I had discussed some time back that unless and until your agriculture develops, the industrialization of the particular state would not be possible. So agriculture contributes to the industrialization of the mm, country and uh, last but not the least agriculture products when sold in the market you tend to get foreign exchange and with this foreign exchange you can import or pay for your imports. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jaya, in one of our previous session, we had discussed about the rural uh, livelihood. There we got to know that uh, poor are dependent on agriculture. Yeah. Why is it so? Why are poor dependent upon agriculture? Okay, um, uh, that is a good question. You find poor are uh, dependent on the culture, um, agriculture uh, and there is evidence to it. <coughs> uh, if you look at India's data, you will find 50% of the population is dependent upon the agriculture, but 
agriculture is contributing only 17 to 18 percent. That means, the agriculture productivity of our country is low. Then, um, if, um, uh, if uh, the person are dependent upon the agriculture naturally are getting a very meager income to sustain themselves. So that is why you have the uh, problem of urban, uh, migration to the urban areas. And uh, I would like to take you to uh, another slide of mine, uh, where <coughs> I like to uh, let you know, uh, okay fine I will come back uh, to it soon. Uh, in our uh, rural economy, we have um, uh, Zamindari, Mahalwari and Rayatwari hmm. systems. Uh, and uh, there is a tenancy farming also, the sharecroppers are also there and uh, uh, so when, um, when, uh, when uh, tenants are, come, con, um, are cultivating the field, they find it very difficult to invest because there is no security of tenancy and uh, sharecroppers, uh, they have to relinquish a large portion of their uh, product to the owners. So, the, neither the sharecroppers nor the tenants would like to invest in the field because they are not getting adequate return from the field. And secondly, those dependent upon the agriculture are facing the problem are, are also in the financial crisis. Like uh, they are not able to pay their debts, so they are caught in the vicious cycle. So, when they are caught in the vicious cycle, there is a low uh, contribution, low investment, low production, uh, low consumption and this vicious cycle continues. So, these are the reason why those dependent upon the agriculture are poor. Uh, though we just uh, wonderfully understood how poors are completely dependent upon agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, but you also said that the agriculture productivity is low because of that. Yeah. So, what are the certain barriers to the agriculture development? Because you previously said that the agriculture is a main part of the village economy. But now the agriculture productivity is low because of the poor dependent on uh, 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 dependent upon agriculture. So, what are the barriers to the agriculture development? Uh, if you, uh, barriers uh, is difficult to uh, categorize, uh, but uh, I'll show you th on my screen. Uh, look at the cultivated area and number of the farmers. Over to the screen, please. Here you will notice. Um, 20 percent of the medium and large farmers that has been colored in yellow uh, and uh, I will begin like this. Yellow indicates medium and large farmers and purple indicates small farmers. Here 20 percent of the medium and large farmers own more than 2 hectares of land and um, 80 percent of the uh, small farmers own uh, 36 percent of the land. So, you find uh, um, 80 percent of the farmers, they own 36 percent of the land and 20 percent of the medium and large farmers, they are owning 64 percent of the land. And those, uh, um, those who are in the, those who are earning, uh, those who are dependent upon the agriculture, their number is large the return from the field is uh, low and uh, they are not in able to uh, in make investment and improve the quality of agriculture. So, one such barrier is land man ratio the, uh, or, or we can also say there is a poor uh, distribution of land. Rich uh, person who owns a large uh, area have uh, um, uh, are not investing much in agriculture and a poor mm -hmm. person who owns small, small plot of land are not able to make much productivity of the agriculture. I will I'll, uh, I'll like to explain it more. Amartya Sen said uh, productivity of uh, productivity from small plot of land is more than the uh, productivity from large part of the land and he proved it also. He says in a small pl plot of land, uh, the farmer and his whole family gives their best. So, the output from that farm increases or improves, but in the large farms uh, um, you will find uh, of course, there is the economies of the scale, but the family members as such do not take much interest. Here we, what we find is 
there are large number of uh, uh, there are um, uh, small chunk of large farmers who, uh, who own the large cultivated area, but have not made much investment which could improve the productivity of the land. Whereas, the small uh, chunk of the population owns the land and uh, they are mostly a small farmers who are owning less than 2 hect hectares. So, one is um, low um, uh, land man ratio, secondly uh, the investment because of the tenancy we have already discussed share cropping uh, system of cultivation, farmers would not like to invest. So, uh, that is that's another barrier. Third, uh, our uh, agriculture is dependent upon the rainfall. 50 percent of the agriculture is dependent, uh, 50 percent uh, of our field is dependent upon the rainfall. That means, if the rainfall is good, the production is good. If the rainfall is not good, the production is not good. So, uh, because of these barriers and there is of course, a capital deficiency also. Uh, farmers tends to borrow capital from the money lenders who tend to charge uh, uh, exorbitant rate of interest. So, once they have uh, uh, approached the money lenders, they are caught in the vicious cycle of poverty and it is difficult for them to uh, be moved out of the uh, uh, mo uh, moved out, out of that debt. So, these are the problems which turns to into a barrier for the agriculture development. Okay. Uh, with your words, Dr. Jaya, we, has, uh, we actually have understood that the agriculture is the staple part of village economy. Mm. There are other factors too. Mm. So, can we have some idea about the village economy? Uh, yeah, village economy basically is a, uh, uh, is a smallest unit in our economy system and uh, life in the village economy is free from the hustle and bustle of the city life. And uh, here I would like to say that um, uh, village economy there is less of uh, pollution and it is mostly dependent upon the agriculture. So, village economy is basically a agri agriculture economy and uh, as you know agriculture plays, plays a very important role in our economy, uh, uh, but those dependent upon the agriculture are poor. Uh, and uh, so, they are not able to give maximum contribution to the agriculture and there are ba barriers to agriculture development also. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Vijay, we have chosen this chapter to understand how the various resources combine to produce the desired goods and services in the village. Mm -hmm. So, what are the four, uh, let us say, what are the factors of production? The four factors of production are land, capital, uh, labor, capital has been divided uh, uh, into physical capital and human capital. We will take up land first. Okay? Now, if you, are, if you are sitting with your pen and pencil, you can see the data. In the, uh, on, uh, on the left side, you have the year, on the right side, you have the cultivated, year, uh, cultivated areas. So, in uh, 1950, 120 uh, cultivated area was there, 1960, 130, one, uh, 1970, 140, 1980, 140, 1990, 140, 2000, 140, 2010, 140. Now, what do you notice? The uh, land is fixed, it is not increasing, right? It cannot be manufactured, it cannot be bought from other place. So, uh, on, uh, um, based on this data, if you do, uh, draw the diagram, how does it come, uh, come around? I think you must have drawn, and the, it, it looks like this. From 1950 to 60, it is increasing, from 60 to 70, it is increasing, then it has become constant. So, this shows land is fixed, it cannot be increased. Okay. But, uh, Dr. Jaya, one or questions that that is my observation too that the land is fixed, but the population is increasing. Hmm. So, in that case, how can we ensure food to all? Yes, that is a very interesting uh, uh, question land is fixed, that means we cannot increase the area of land and the population is increasing. So, how do we uh, satisfy our population, growing population? No, we, uh, you must have uh, Shipa heard about the green revolution. It yes. started in 1960, uh, the father of green revolution uh, is Norman Bullo. He combined um, uh, a Japanese dwarf seed with a another seed and came up with a high, uh, high yielding variety seeds. 
in uh, in our country around 60s uh, we were facing the hunger problem that means we were not able to feed our population so our country was um, was uh, actually interested in raising the productivity of the field so um, in uh, we we started experimenting with it and here in uh, india uh, we have ms swaminathan as the father of green revolution he uh, used hyb seeds and um, the use of hyb seeds requires irrigation pesticides fertilizers and uh, and with this with the help of these we found the uh, productivity of the field had uh, increased with the same uh, uh, with the same amount of uh, within the same amount uh, within the same cultivated area there was a large increase in the productivity of the food grains so uh, uh, with this uh, uh, with the use of new technology that is use of uh, high yielding variety seeds irrigation pesticides fertilizer in fact modern technology helped to solve the problem of growing population now in our country the problem is not with the food grains the problem is with the intake of proteinous item like uh, fruits egg and other non um, and other uh, proteinous items uh dr jaya nowadays nowadays th that's a different scenario but usually we do see people migrating mm -hmm. from the rural area to the cities or metropolitan cities mm -hmm. so could you explain to the students what's a, uh, what's a rural urban migration what is a rural urban migration you must be reading in yes. the newspaper you must be uh, mm -hmm. hearing it in your family you must be watching on the tv that uh, migrant labor from cities are coming back to their hometowns now what is this mm. rural urban migration why there was rural urban migration there are many reasons for it first um, uh, uh, urban areas uh, uh, provide employment opportunity so there is a direct relationship between the employment opportunity available in the urban area and the migration uh, uh, taking place from the rural place more and more employment opportunities are available in the urban areas more and more people will migrate from the rural place to the urban areas and second uh, you will find why people migrate the second uh, major reason is there is a wage differential uh, um, in urban area uh, uh, their uh, salary is higher than the people working in the rural areas so uh, the purchasing power is more and that means uh, their salary is high in terms of real income they tend to earn more money they tend to be engaged in the employment with whatever skill they have in the urban area so people tend to migrate from uh, rural areas to the urban areas in case we want to put a check to this migration we have to create many employment opportunities in the rural areas itself that is we have to encourage um, uh, um, uh, we have to encourage employment of the population in agriculture and allied activities and i'll tell you uh, because of this uh, migration there is feminization of agriculture i'll show you the, uh, in my uh, slide over to the screen please yeah here you uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, screen you can see women are working in the field and men are transporting uh, goods on the buffalo as per 2011 uh, census you find 50% of the agriculture laborers are women and uh, out of which 25% of them are working in the field and only 12% are uh, own the operation holding whereas in the small and medium um, scale of field uh, the percentage of land held by women are around 25% so um, uh, when men are migrating to the uh, urban areas uh, uh, you find the area has been occupied by the uh, or the work is being done by the women 
Now, here is very interesting. Uh, now, since women are working in the field, women have taken to uh, cultivation and uh, not only to cultivation, they have also gone to the agriculture and allied activities like they are looking after horticulture, they are um, looking after apiculture, uh, they are um, uh, taking care of uh, pisciculture. In fact, they have become responsible for integrated management and uh, um, and uh, they are uh, making use of, of uh, resources in the best possible uh, way to meet their daily needs so uh, when uh, women are taking uh, um, women are working in the field they are taking uh, care of the resources then i would like to uh, tell you that their entitlement to different resources should improve um, uh, I have just discussed their ownership of land is low. That means very few uh, owner, uh, very few women own a land, and they are working on the land. Majority of them are working on the land, but they are working on the land owned by the men or owned by the others. So, if you want to improve the uh, productivity of the uh, village, or if you want to have a rural development, we need to improve the condition of the women. Uh, and uh, with uh, for, uh, to improve the condition of women, we need to have uh, um, uh, improve the entitlement. Uh, unless and until you improve the entitlement of women, there won't be rural development. There won't be development of agriculture in the rural areas. So uh, you find uh, because of this rural urban migration, there is feminization of agriculture, and um, uh, um, migrant laborers have gone to urban areas in search of employment, better salary, uh, but uh, what uh, is missing is uh, safety nets. That is, they should have been provided with some insurance, they should have been provided with some subsidized food. So, that in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in, uh, in this crisis, they would not have suffered like this. Uh, here again, I would like to say, if we want to check migration of the population from rural areas to urban areas, we have to work on both social infrastructure as well as economic infrastructure. We have to build more and more roads, other uh, um, uh, um, buildings which can be used for community purpose. Regarding social infrastructure, we have to invest more in the hospital, more in the education, so that people are skilled and, uh, and have a better health uh, and they need not migrate to the urban areas in search of employment. And for this again I would like to say there should be uh, encouragement to agriculture and allied activities. More and more people should find engagement in the agriculture and allied activities. That is um, uh, um, they can be engaged in processing of the food, they can be engaged in uh, after processing, they can be engaged in marketing of the food. These are in huge demand because a country has a huge population. So, we need to build up these infrastructure in the rural areas and provide in the provide to the urban areas. So, with these provision you will find the migration from um, rural areas to urban areas has been checked. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Jaya, many viewers are all also asking this, mm -hmm. but in short I will ask you this question. Uh, breaking uh, the barrier of like traditional masculine type profession, which you just said that the females are also participating mm -hmm. uh, as being an agriculturist. So, they are breaking the stereotypes, but mm -hmm. still the women are not seen in the front line when it comes to the agriculture aspect. This question has been asked by Mr. Anjani. Okay. So, if you could just answer it. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting, at least you are sensitized, uh, I am happy uh, uh, a student was sensitized towards the urban eco uh, rural economy and another towards the role of women in the field. Uh, uh, um, actually, uh, when, um, when you visit, visit the village in the harvest season, you will find many of them working in the field. Uh, they are uh, planting the uh, planting that is working in the paddy field uh, or after some time you will find them cutting the uh, cutting the crops after some time you will find them processing the crops so this way uh, they are engaged but these uh, news does not feature because uh, one such reason is they are not the owners or mm. they are not uh, aware of their rights 
the women working in the field are not being uh, are not aware of their rights so they do not raise when they are exploited or when their voices are not heard uh, uh, and, uh, and and our media uh, I, I don't know um, how to put up but uh, then we uh, we we have taken up such sessions uh, in, at ncrt to uh, of course take care of the marginalized section of the population women uh, being one such um, uh, uh, one such person in the uh, uh, belonging to the marginalized uh, section needs to be taken care of and uh, that's what I, I told you they are playing such an important role they are not the owners of the resources uh, uh, they are not able to raise their voice so we need to work for them we need to uh, uh, make them aware of their rights and unless and until women work in the field that is uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, that is they are able to fight for their rights they will not be seen they will not be heard uh, as you can see 50 percent of the um, agriculture uh, laborers are women because uh, and uh, there is evidence to it there are large rural urban migrations so men are migrating to the urban areas and the, uh, the cultivation has not stopped this cultivation or this uh, 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 this um, uh, paddy cultivation or wheat cultivation mm. uh, the process of cultivation has been taken over by women right uh, dr jay from your words i have concluded is that there is still a fair difference between the cultivated area and the number of farmers particularly in the rural arena so mm -hmm. should there be the redistribution of land don't you think so yes uh, there should be uh, i'll uh, uh, come back to my slide again uh, on that uh, yeah so again i'm coming back to this uh, pie chart here uh, on left side you have cultivated area on the right side you have number of farmers you see 20 percent of the farmers own six, uh, 64 percent of the land, uh, 64 percent of the cultivated area and 30 uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, 80 percent of the farm own, uh, farmers own only 36 percent of the cultivated area. So, we need to redistribute the land in favor of the landless. Land, uh, landless people when they get the plot of land, uh, you, will f uh, you will find the whole family will be engaged in cultivation. And uh, since the family is engaged, the output from the small plot of land would improve. In uh, Bengal, I think uh, this was taken up. Um, uh, they have uh, donated lands. In Kerala, they have donated lands. Uh, there was a, a um, um, uh, there was a, uh, uh, have you heard the name of Vinova Bhave? He said, you do the bhudan, whatever excess you have, you donate it to the poor. Uh, so, uh, there was a, uh, there has been ceiling imposed on the, um, uh, on any individual. You cannot uh, um, uh, keep land beyond this ceiling. I think this ceiling uh, comes around some 18 to 20 uh, acres of land. You cannot, uh, one individual cannot own uh, more than 18 to 20 acres of the land. So, land when distributed among the landless will naturally, uh, its productivity will, will improve, there will be increase in the employment, there will be increase in the mm. output and uh, you will find our rural, uh, there is a uh, development in the rural areas also. Okay. Dr. Jaya here, the one of our viewer has sent one question to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the name is Myra and she is asking what are the items that comes under physical capital? What are the items that come under physical items capital? Items that comes under physical capital. Uh, physical capital which, you, which is tangible, which can be seen, uh, that is uh, you have the machines, thresher machines, you have the tractors, you have the um, uh, let us say uh, um, harrowing machi machines which are worked in the field, which are used in the field. So, these are the physical capital and working capitals are basically uh, raw materials which we, uh, which we tend to uh, buy more and more as we go for more and more uh, production. Like uh, let us say there is a particular field and you want to cultivate that field, uh, you bought a tractor to cultivate that field. After some time, uh, um, uh, now, uh, you started cultivating in year 2015. So, you bought a tractor and started cultivating it. Now, you want to cultivate also in 2016. In 2016, you are not going to buy tractor again. You, of course, so you are not going to buy tractor again, it is fixed. 
So, the tractor is ter uh, termed as physical capital, but you will need more of raw materials that is every year you will need to buy high yielding variety seeds, you will need to buy fertilizers, you will need to buy insecticides, pesticides. So, these for this you require a working capital because it varies from year to year. So, these are termed as uh, working capital and the other one is termed as physical capital. And capital mm -hmm. here I would like to say is mm -hmm. another very important uh, factor of production. Um, in the next uh, chapter in this within the same uh, book you will come across people as a resource. That means, people is an asset for the economy, they are not the liability of the economy. And how do you make an asset? The chapter has discussed. There is a discussion how uh, with the provision of uh, education, health, you can have a healthy population for your economy. In case uh, you do not provide uh, all these, the, um, the population will not be uh, asset for your economy. Right. Uh, Dr. Jaya here, I will take one of the common question has been asked by Kathleen, Nehru and Manoj. They all are asking, can you suggest some kind of activity which will help them to know about the rural uh, economy? So nice that you want to know about the rural economy. Uh, you read the chapter on story of village Palampur and there are many other stories uh, dealing with uh, uh, rural scenarios. Um, you can read the story of Prem Chand. Uh, uh, that is in Hindi, but uh, he has uh, of course mm. very vividly described the rural life and go through it. And then, uh, the stories about rural lives uh, also appear in the journals, they also appear in the uh, magazines. You can uh, go through it and uh, um, I, I would suggest in case you become editor of a newspaper, you have a column on rural areas also. And every day there can be stories related to rural areas and student will find it interesting. I am very happy to tell you ma'am that yeah. we are receiving a lot of questions, the students are asking questions, sure, that sure. means they have go through about mm. this topic, they are yeah. listening us. Uh, yeah. Many viewers are asking about if you could just briefly tell us about non-farming activities performed in the rural background. Non-farming activities, yes. uh, farming activities of course deal with the agriculture and non-farming mm -hmm. activities like a shopkeeper who is selling the groceries or uh, let us say uh, barber who cuts the hair, plumber who uh, uh, repairs the uh, uh, tap uh, uh, and uh, when, we ha when we are talking about the rural economy, we also have um, cottage and village industries. These are non-farming activities. Uh, co in cottage and village industries, you have products uh, made of khadi and uh, the uh, khadi product is uh, very comfortable to wear. So, I will advise more and more people or more and more uh, friends of yours to come up with the khadi product. They are locally ma made when you buy one khadi product uh, that is a non-farming activity, you are actually giving employment to one person in the rural areas. You may buy a, a khadi product in the form of textile or you may find um, uh, buy a khadi product in the form of um, uh, eatables like achar, jam uh, and there are many others which you can buy. And uh, buy, um, uh, purchase of khadi products is actually a non-farming uh, activity and it will play a role in the rural development. Okay. Mm. One last question I will take up. Ma'am, uh, the question has been asked by Neera and she is asking, is there a way one can grow more on the same land? to increase village output and to contribute to the village economy further. Yeah, that is a way to increase your uh, output or, uh, uh, or to enhance the productivity of the particular area. The, uh, the one such method suggested is uh, use of high yielding variety seeds, use of irrigation, use of fertilizer, use of pesticides, insecticides which will automatically increase the productivity in the field. But here I would like to say in the, uh, uh, there should be judicious use and not uh, maximum use. Use of fertilizer has increased the productivity of the soil, has, is, has increased the productivity of the field, but it has also led to the, uh, uh, it has also um, led to the decline in the fertility of the soil because chemical fertilizer acts upon the soil and it tends to reduce its fertility. Then use of irrigation, use of too much irrigation has led to, uh, has brought down the water table. 
So, uh, the farmers, uh, so the area tends to deteriorate. After, for some time, you will find increase in productivity, increase in the food grains from the same crop of area, uh, from the same area as you asked. But if continued for a longer time without any uh, precautionary measures, it will lead to decline in the production. So, we need to have more of organic farming where we are using organic seeds or the local uh, seeds which have been developed in the local area and we are using organic fertilizers and we are using drip irrigation instead of irrigation uh, from the uh, tube wells or the pump which also saves water and uh, saves uh, the water table also. Okay. So, I hope you all enjoyed this session where we talked about a hypothetical village Palampur. Mm -hmm. To understand various resources, how it's combined to produce the desired goods and services in the village. We also talked about the farming and non-farming activities. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Jaya, for being with us. Thank you so much. I like to uh, conclude with this uh, quotation. The mode of transacting the topic would make the lesson interesting and be helpful in developing the skill of logical uh, argument, interpretation of data and its application in real life situations. Learning therefore becomes uh, meaningful for the individual as well as for the society. So, use more and more live example for in your classroom and tend to engage your stu students and you find they will start taking uh, or they will start participating in your classroom. Thank you so much. So, to the viewers, if you still have any doubts or any suggestions, then you feel free to call us on our toll free number or you can drop your suggestions or questions on our official email ID ciet.kishormanch at the gmail.com. In the next session, we shall talk on the number system for class 9 and we will be back after a short while. Till then, take care and keep watching Kishormanch. Thank you.